Welcome back. We're up to set number 12 on a section or page 9-14 on the elevators. Um, it's going to involve uh, riveting the trailing edge where we had that, um, that little wedge piece with tanks in it where it smooshed together. It'll involve actually setting all the rivets in there. Um, so off camera, um, just now I knocked out the right elevator, then we'll get to the left elevator right now. Um, wanted to just do it off camera to make sure I uh, knew what I was doing. It's been a while since, uh, since I last did it. Um, if you recall, the rudder trailing edge uh, involved a, a similar type of deal where there's the wedge, tank sealant, um, and squished together and riveted together. So anyways, I knocked out this one uh, first, like I said, off camera. Turned out working really well. You'll see, watch me bend this thing right now. Um, you'll see nice straight edge along that uh, top portion there. Hopefully you can get it in frame. Don't want to bend this. Um, I have this big fear of having like a nearly completed part and then uh, putting a nice ding in it. Uh, so anyways, trying to avoid that. So we'll get to this one right now. I'll set that camera up at, a, uh, at an angle where you can see. So we're all done with the rivets here on the, uh, the trailing edges. They came together really well. Um, this side here you'll see is the manufactured head side. So that's the, um, the side that came looking real pretty. This side here is what I was mentioning earlier uh, when it comes to the whole acorn and a small hole deal. Um, so you'll see they're all very, very consistent. Came out looking really nice uh, and pleased with the results. Uh, so moving ahead, next steps is gonna involve putting some rivets in here and then uh, moving forward and eventually getting this thing bent over and closed out. So we'll get to it. Alrighty, so the first gotcha in my, uh, or one of, one of my first, I guess the first gotcha on this video here is right here. So this step involves uh, putting that slight bend on the, uh, this here but you'll see I can't get any further than that so if I was to do this again uh, before like if anyone out there is building their uh, the elevator and are not this far along I would knock this out before ever uh, getting to this point because now I can't get this in here um, so I think what I'll do is I'll get a um, pair of hand seamers and just put a slight bend it's not going to be perfect but it'll be better than leaving it fully empty or fully uh, untouched so yeah if anyone out there is building theirs um, I would recommend at least on the, you want to do on the uh, top skin, uh, but get that top skin at least already prepped because you won't be able to do it at this point here. Perfect. That'll work. So anyone out there who's doing uh, what I'm doing here, as you probably saw there, just to using the uh, hand seamer, I was able to get that So excuse all of the mess here in the garage, but I wanted to get to this real quick and kind of go over how um, how the uh, the rolling here went of the uh, the leading edges. Um, so you'll see they're all complete, all riveted together, and really pleased with the results. Um, I did want to go over real quick though some things that I learned along the way here. Um, I know in the rudder build I probably went over some some key learnings, but I think I've gotten to a point where, where I feel pretty confident. Um, 
if I had to keep doing this, which I probably will in the future, um, replicating these results here. Um, let me put this camera down real quick and hop on the other side of the table and kind of go over those learnings with you. So summed up, a um, couple of things that I learned. First thing I learned is uh, when it comes to rolling those edges, um, I found it easier to use a, uh, a smaller pipe versus the, the larger one. I know, I think it recommended in the, uh, in the process here, let's see. Yeah, so in the instructions from Vans, they recommended using a uh, inch and a quarter diameter pipe. Um, which I kind of, it's, it's close to an inch and a quarter. And when they're saying that measurement, they're referring to the, the outside diameter there. Um, this one here, which is larger, is just a hair over inch and a quarter. So we're looking at inch and, what would that be? Inch and of an inch. Um, so it's a little bit, little bit bigger than they recommended. I was having some issues here when it came to rolling, uh, where I, I wasn't getting a, I wasn't getting it enough curve in the uh, in the, the aluminum there. It would, uh, it would bend real nicely, but then it would just return back to its original location. Aluminum uh, tends to have that that bounce back, where unless you're able to really crank down on it and get it really stuck into itself, then it'll kind of return back to normal. Um, See, so yeah, I was having some issues with this, and it resulted in uh, really trying to forcibly get those those pieces of aluminum together, uh, which I wasn't happy with. Um, so. I went from this one and uh, jumped down a little bit smaller in size. Um, this one here is not an inch and a quarter, it's, it's under that. Um, if anything, it's only, it's only a sixteenth over an inch. Uh, so it's really not as big as Vans calls out for. Um, but I found that it worked really well. You have to be a little bit more careful. And just for reference, this stuff here is three quarter inch uh, schedule 40. Um, and, and if you're careful with it, and don't go too hardcore on it, it, it worked out really well. Uh, one thing I did want to mention though, is I know there's other, other people out there who have tried, um, have done successfully, um, using or mash drilling it and putting Clecos in there and then using that versus like duct tape. Um, I would not do that personally. Um, again, these videos are not how-to guides, but I tried it and what I found was like, yes, it's going to pull that material around, uh, but at the same time, the material that's left between each one is going to start to pucker. Um, and it's, it's going to get deformed to where the sheet metal is not going to have a consistent edge. The, the second I saw that, I uh, immediately put a stop to it. And I do have a couple little spots on here uh, where it puckers out ever so slightly. Uh, I don't, don't have any, any worries there, but if it, if it does worry me in the future when we go to put things together, I can always add in another, another ribbon right in the middle. Um, but yeah, it, as soon as I started doing that, it immediately started to, to want to separate. And uh, yeah, it was a no-go. Um, so for me, what worked best getting to that here uh, was using, uh, I originally had Gorilla Tape, which is great um, duct tape to use. It, it holds really, really tight. You only need one strip as long as it's nice and clean. Um, so between uses, I, to get my oils off of this, I, I wipe it all down with, uh, with uh, rubbing alcohol just to get it clean. And the tape really liked that it, it adhered to it really well. And, uh, and worked well. Um, outside of that, I did run out of Gorilla Tape and use standard Harbor Freight duct tape. It was more likely to slip, so I ended up having to, uh, to put one, one down and then kind of overlap it and, and put another one. But it worked, so if you have cheap duct tape, that does work. Um, then the other thing I did was I used um, some locking, if I can find them anywhere, uh, vice grips. So literally just put it on one side and lock down on it and then you can use that to then push forward and then just adjust it as needed. Uh, for the most part, I only needed it on one end and then the other end, um, as you probably saw in the video, I was really just pushing it down to try to maintain that down because as you're rolling, it's gonna wanna lift off the table and bring that arc away from the material. Uh, so just pushing down on one side uh, with one hand and then occasionally if it was being a real pain, I would grab um, uh, some channel locks and just put channel locks on the other side and then kind of just slowly work away at it um, until I get until I got where I was happy. Um, on that on that topic of getting to where you're happy, uh, don't go overkill with a smaller pipe. I did find on on uh, on the second one that I did on the left elevator, did find that I went a little bit too far. So when I went to pull the material together to rip them together, um, they started to kind of curve away from each other. And the reason that's an issue is as as I was setting the rivet. 
you weren't able to, you ended up with a gap between the two and it was a no-go. So um, it was no issue though. I literally just pulled off, uh, just pulled off the Clecos that I had, pushed it back out, kind of pulled the arc back out of the material, reversed the arc there, put it back together and it was perfectly fine. Um, so if you're using the, the thinner pipe here, uh, which I probably would jump straight to this in the future, um, just try not to go too overkill. Um, but if you do, you can always backtrack it a little bit. Um, and the other thing that I think was a absolute game changer, um, if you ignore everything I just said, um, it just had one, one takeaway. These gloves made it so easy. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw it in the video there, but it made it so easy to grab this material because you're, you're in the garage, it's hot out here, even right now, I'm not even sweating and it just, it's slippery, it's, it's, you can't really grip it, but using uh, these, whatever this is, rubber coated gloves from Harbor Freight, sure you can get them anywhere else. Uh, but it, you can shrink it here, but it just grips this like no other. Uh, so I made it super easy and controlled uh, to be able to hold the material in either myself or I had a man out here for a moment there um, helping the Clico and you're able to, to hold the material steady and it doesn't want to move and you're not playing the game of slipping and sliding and if it does slip, it's maybe we'll grab that Clico crooked. Next thing you know, you're dealing with it with a um, deformed, uh, deformed hole. So, yeah, this made it really easy, and I'll actually probably use this going forward whenever I like have to store these uh, these pieces inside the house. We have multiple multiple areas where I'm storing it. We have to get up on the ladder and kind of put it along the, the top of the ceiling. I'm gonna use these gloves going forward. I mean, it it rips it like no other with this uh, with the rubber. There. All right, so moving on to the next portion here. Um, next portion should have involved uh, these pieces here. So these uh, these trim brackets that are gonna go. Um, in their locations. Let me see if I can get a shot of that on camera. Um, you'll see these will live in here. And uh, anyways, already have these all prepped and ready to go. You'll notice um, that these are not the standard uh, standard brackets provided by Vans. Uh, these ones were here. And the reason I switched them out is because I did a horrible job drilling them is number one. Um, I had center punched it, thought I had the holes all lined up, uh, but my drill bit walked and it probably would have been fine, but it would have really bothered me. You'll see there how they're not perfect and it really shouldn't have mattered too much, but the reason why I didn't want that was because uh, as you rivet or as you, you then match drill it to the material here, I would always see on the outside it wouldn't be a perfect rectangle, per per perfect square. Um, I wouldn't have liked it. so. Didn't like that. And then also I know other people out there have said that these have cracked in the past. I know Vans remedied that when they, they added a weld to each side of it, where I think previously it was just a weld on, on one side. Um, so with all that in mind, there's a, um, there's a gentleman on iFlyRB10.com who, uh, who creates these really nice machined ones. Uh, so you'll see I already did primer it just because it's two mating pieces there. Um, so I did primer it. Um, but they're real pretty looking. Um, it's it's a perfect. It's going to be a perfect rectangle. So I'm not going to not going to go crazy seeing my horribly done uh, drilling job. Um, so yeah, that was the next step in the process. After that is also already prepared and ready, uh, which is the lead weights. So in the previous video that I uh, that I released, you'll see I went over uh, some things that I learned along the way cutting down these these uh, counterbalance weights. So these are going to be installed in the tip ribs here. Um, so yeah, we're going to move along here. I'll quit talking. We'll get to building an airplane part and uh, we'll get to it. Alrighty, counterbalance weights are on there and torqued down, so that is uh, ready to move forward. Um, so regarding torquing real quick, um, something I did to make my life easier um, is went ahead and printed out uh, these charts and laminated them. Uh, so it has, well, this one just on the front there. Um, anyways, quick reference guide, that way I can know how much the torquing is down. Um, so I had that as well as something else that made my life easier is uh, these little printouts of how to read those uh, those AN bolts. So it makes it really easy to find what you're looking for. Uh, laminated it, and it makes it really easy to find out of the bag. So I'll quit talking now. Next step is going to involve um, making these little holders out of uh, out of some plywood. So holders for the uh, for the trim tabs. So I'm going to get those knocked out real quick. I won't get that on video because it's just cutting wood down. Uh, but then next step will involve uh, bending and forming those uh, trim tabs. So we'll get to it.
radiusing the edge, um, a 32nd of an inch, like just a, a slight radius to prevent any kind of cracking of the skin. Putting uh, double-sided sticky tape on it, and then dropping that inside of there. Putting another piece on top, so having a look, uh, look a bit like, like putting that there, putting this piece on top, and clamping that down the table, and then going at it there, uh, and then starting the bending process. It was super hard. Um, even this next method that I'm going to discuss here is it's still kind of tricky. Um, I know just searching around in the forums online and then through YouTube videos, it sounds like this is one of the parts where it's common to have to do a redo. So I watched a, um, a video by channels chasing every second. Um, I know they were building an RV10 a while back. And uh, he also went over the frustrations there of this process. And I think he himself had also mentioned that he was on a, uh, either on a previous build, he had, he made a part and had to reorder the, the skin or maybe the current one. Either way, it's a frustrating part. It can be pretty, pretty tedious. Um, so yeah, I, I gave it a shot. I tried originally doing what the manual said, double size sticky tape, dropping it in there, um, clamping it down going at it and it was a disaster. I, I luckily stopped it before I got any further. Uh, what had happened was I had had this in there, double sided stick the tape down, I had it clamped down and uh, I'll actually get the one I had it on. So I had it clamped down on there and the first thing I noticed was as this was in there, as I started going at it, uh, which he mentioned on that video, was it started to push. So I was keeping an eye on, on how far how far back that piece of wood was. And this double sided sticky tape just gave up on me. Um, the stuff I was using was just regular old scotch, ram, double sided sticky tape. And uh, yeah, it didn't work. It started to move. And what happens then if it moves is you end up getting more and more material. Your radius is no longer sharp. And you end up with a pushy edge. It's just going to push too much material up. Which in this case, if you have too much material being pushed up, it's going to push the other piece of material away. And next thing you know, you'll probably end up with a balloon here. Uh, so I didn't want that to happen. So I immediately stopped. And uh, it became kind of more of an issue. So then I go to pull it out of there and it left behind some, you probably can't see it on camera, but there's now a double sided sticky tape uh, residue inside of it that I have to get out of there because that's where one of my foam ribs is going to go. And I don't want that in the way of the pro seal, the tank seal. Um, so, anyways, don't want to be too negative here, but this part, <laughs> this part's a pain. So I went ahead and in that same video by uh, Chase Every Second, he, uh, he had mentioned using a piece of steel. So I went out to, uh, I think it was at True Valley is where I found it, um, just a regular old piece of 316, um, probably old rolled steel, whatever this is, 316 inch steel. Uh, I originally uh, profiled it down, just thinking like an idiot, uh, profiled it down both edges. And then I quickly realized after the fact that that would not work for what I'm trying to do here. Because uh, what you want this material to do is you want it to hold inside that angle and then be able to kind of bend up against this. Um, so you want the bottom to be totally flat and the top to be pro 
proud of the table, um, and then also letting this material sit proud of this uh, uh, this bar here by a 32nd of an inch to account for that skin. Which I measured the ones earlier. I've gotten good at seeing it off of eyesight, uh, but if you wanted to, every time you can get your ruler and verify, which that looks pretty much perfect. difficult that is to, uh, to normally do. I'm uh, going to be very content with this. Alright, so I'm incredibly pleased with those results there. Um, the uh, first one I had attempted to use uh, that, piece, that same piece of steel that I used to form the ends, uh, but instead used it as a way to basically have the material flat no cleat goes, no nothing on it, basically flat with clamps on each end, a clamp in the middle, and I tried using that as like a makeshift break, um, kind of lifting the material off the surface of the table. Didn't work. It ended up with a couple of spots where the edge was was not crisp at all. It was pulling away from the table and leaving a very, uh, just a kind of a rounded over edge versus having a nice, sharp, consistent edge. Um, so, used the rivet gun here, turned down the setting on it, and then kind of slowly went away at it, um, as you probably saw on camera just now. And it worked really well. I have this uh, little angle gauge here for doing uh, doing miters on baseboards. Uh, but sure enough, it's it's right at 15 degrees, uh, which is which is really nice. Uh, so you'll see it has a really nice crisp edge there, and it will work. Uh, so really pleased with the results. kind of had to wiggle around the uh, each of the quick goes totally doable here I think if you didn't have this you'd probably have to buck these which would for sure be a pain uh, but next steps uh, moving on is going to involve uh, tank sealant I believe so we're going to be doing uh, tank sealant on those foam ribs uh, which sit right on inside of uh, right inside the gap there so that'll be pro sealed together um, so yeah that'll be super fun or I keep saying pro seal tank sealant uh, and pro seal is a, is a trade name so Tank sealant on those uh, those foam ribs there. 
and then I think this will be uh, set up to uh, set up to dry, and then moving on to the next steps. So we'll get to that now. Tabs. Um, so you'll see I have this one already match drilled on the hinge there um, on the right trim tab. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and jump to the left one. Did this one off camera just to get a good idea of what the heck I'm doing. Uh, so I'm going to give you a quick shot of, of what all I did and then I will show you probably in time lapse form um, doing the one on the, uh, the left trim tab there. Alrighty, so off camera I previously already drilled these two holes. Um, they're offset in a quarter of an inch from each side there. And what that allowed me to do is go ahead and get this cleat going on. And that will allow me to get a, a clean picture of what that spacing should look like to be able then to drill here. Alrighty, so got all that wrapped up. I don't know if you saw on camera, not sure if it cut off uh, beforehand or not, but I finished getting these uh, these hinge pins put in here. So you'll see that pin that I was bending, I think over there, you probably saw on camera anyways, over at the vise there, um, that pin started straight, uh, but then we had to put a, a bend on it there to track it this way, and then there's a hole right there, and that is where some safety wire will go. Um, so anyways, all ready to go. really happy with the results here so um, elevators are complete next step we'll be jumping into the actual tail cone itself um, so it'll be a fun part of the project um, so yeah quick recap here um, these were pretty I would say it it, uh, it was a little bit more difficult than uh, some of the other parts we've done um, just because of the uh, the bending there of the trim tabs that was definitely a little bit uh, a little bit scary I know uh, other I'm gonna move over to the other side here I know other, I've seen in the forums online, people have mentioned that uh, trim tabs can be something that you can build uh, two times, three times, maybe four times before you're content with it. So this was probably the most difficult part. If you're getting to the step, definitely take your time, YouTube it, Google it, uh, see what other people are doing to, to work around and, and make things happen. I think the biggest, uh, Two biggest takeaways uh, for the whole thing um, are regarding this, this trim tab here. Uh, number one, when using that um, that bending press steel, it, in the middle, it really wanted to balloon out. So I had to really kind of work it by, by hand pushing in the middle there. Um, and though that was also another pain point that I found online that we're having issues with. Uh, that was one. And then the other one was was bending these sides down here. And the manual had called for using those wood blocks. I think I mentioned it earlier, but I was not having any luck there. Um, so I would definitely, if I was to do these again, go ahead and, if I can find it somewhere, go ahead and uh, profile that puppy down with, uh, with a piece of steel. Um, this is, and it make it super easy because they're really crisp edges there. Really happy, glad I did it in the, in the first go. Um, so yeah, totally done here. Next step, like I said, will involve, um, will involve doing the, uh, starting on the telco. So, the reference point here, it's going to be a, a lot bigger of a project. Let's see. 
pretty, pretty big area, uh, but in case family, friends, or anyone else is watching who doesn't know what this part is that I currently finished, um, that was the, uh, the elevators here. So, got a left and a right elevator, which are right there. So left and right elevator. Um, so those are done. All quit talking here. The next video, um, it'll be interesting to see um, how far I can get. Let me move this mic around again. Um, it'll be interesting to see how far I can get in the tail cut. I, we're uh, closing escrow on a house at the end of this month here. So this whole whole viewing area here is going to change. Uh, it's going to look a whole lot different. Uh, but we're moving from this house to our next. Uh, so not sure if I'm going to fully dive in and, and get started on that next part or or what so we'll see next video may start out in this garage here may not uh, but anyways made it this this far thanks for watching i know this video is probably a pretty long one um but yeah thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one if you have any questions comments concerns uh, anything comment down below um yeah thanks for watching adios